Hey, mate. Hello. Hello. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussion, I guess, uh, about Marcus and Rob and Al um, in terms of like all defensive team consideration. Um, but it seems like Jalen and Jason have, um, you know, deserved to be in that conversation as well, just based on the role they've played and you guys having the best defense. Um, if you had to make a case for both of those guys individually, what has stood out to you about their defensive impact this year? Well, their willingness, first of all, um, you know, when you look at them just from a physical standpoint, they should be great defenders. I think it gets overlooked at times because they're a scoring prowess. And, uh, you know, Marcus and Rob are more known as defending defensive players. Um, but that's why, you know, we have strength in our numbers as a defensive team. There's no real weakness out there from a personnel standpoint. And uh, like I said, just because they score, can score the ball so well, I think they've kind of been labeled as scorers, but obviously very capable and have been willing to do it all year. And that's why we are as good as we are. And having two guys who are, you know, such great scorers who are also willing to, you know, guard the best uh, scores on the other team. I mean, um, how does that kind of set the tone for the rest of the rest of the guys in terms of, you know, looking up to what they're doing? Yes, yeah, so it's following suit by our leaders. Uh, you know, Marcus and Rob, they do that on a night to night basis from a defensive standpoint, you know, setting the tone, but uh, to have the willingness of your two top scorers uh, be out there doing the same thing every night and buying into what we've been preaching throughout the year. It's kind of how the results have showed and why we are so good because uh, like I said, no real weaknesses across the board. And when your best scorers and best players are leading by example, it kind of trickles down to the rest of the team. Hey, Amy. Hello. Um, you know, teams must be getting pretty inventive with Jason. I mean, there are teams that still can get to him. Like last night, uh, the Dallas game comes to mind. Just how much do you guys still have to combat the different ways that they're going to blitz them and double them. Yeah, we, we, you know, looking at Miami and some of the things they do, uh, we were prepared for that, understanding the, the hot streak he's on right now, back-to-back -back player of the week, and, you know, averaging around 33, 34. Um, teams are going to come after him and make other guys prove it. And so what we've done a good job of, and I, met, I keep mentioning the Chicago game early in the season, it's our first time really seeing it, and we've had a lot of practice since then, so... Uh, having our guys prepared behind it to make plays, to be confident, be aggressive, and, uh, you know, kind of be in attack mode when they get those numbers. And so it's an area that we know is going to come up in the playoffs. We've seen it quite a bit this year and uh, got to have our guys in the right spots to make plays behind it. Is, you know, this just sort of increases the standard for him of how he's trying to beat all these double teams. I mean, just how much has he improved in that respect all season yeah he's he's been great he's made the right plays he yeah gets off the ball um trusts his teammates and like i said he's enjoying the success that they have because of you know the attention that he commands um the passing has been you know noticeable some of the passes he's making he has a size to do that and uh in general you can use him as a bait to, to you know, have the numbers behind or we can put him in certain positions where it's harder to double team and we move him around quite a bit. And so, um, you know, Miami was coming after him pretty strong. Dallas did as well. And those are a few games that do stand out uh, where we didn't attack it as well uh, in the fourth quarter specifically. But uh, overall, we've been really good at it. And, you know, you, you make a team pay once or twice, they'll back off and you miss a shot, they'll stay in. And so it's kind of uh, up to the other guys to make the right play behind there, make the shots, same thing like a zone or whatever. And so uh, Jason understands it, it's a sign of respect that he's scoring this well and playing this well and uh, just trusts his teammates and right, makes the right play as he does all year. Look like you and Jason were having kind of a longer chat down there. Anything you can share with us? No, just uh, t touching on last night and what, which we did with the team in a film session and, you know, looked at, the, all the opportunities. We didn't play our best basketball and we were up or down one at halftime. Um, you know, 11 3 run to end the half. Some of the things we could have done better the fouling, you know, seven, seven free throws late in that, late in the second quarter. And then being up four going into the fourth quarter. Like I said, not playing our best. Uh, we had a lot of mistakes on their three point shooters. They made 13, I think nine or 10 of them were off of our mistakes and still being, still having a four point game and not playing our best basketball. So a lot of positives to take away from it. But understanding uh, 
you know, the physicality of the game was different. Uh, I think, like I said, I was telling him we got caught up a little bit and complaining too much, and then our execution down the stretch wasn't the best. So um, areas we can, you know, be encouraged about not playing our best and basically holding the team to about 102 minus the free throws at the end and, you know, the 27 to 15 fourth quarter. We could improve in a lot of ways, and it's a very winnable game. What stood out about the, those crunch time minutes to you? And you guys had like two points in the last four minutes. Yeah, a lot of missed shots, easy missed shots at the rim. Um, you know, we, Jalen had two, Jason had one, uh, you know, going against Lowry or Strauss inside. And so uh, we got a lot of really good looks at the basket when it was a two-point deficit. Uh, and then the other part was when we had a five-point lead, giving up some of the threes that we gave up, uh, you know, on Lowry and some of those guys. So execution-wise, we did get some good shots. Uh, you know, we hurt the zone, and they got out of that pretty quickly in the fourth quarter. And then uh, just the, the finishing at the basket, and we had our opportunities. I know, I know you said several times your focus is staying healthy and playing well. Is there anything you want to see from these final five regular season games? Yeah, lineups and rotations. Uh, taking a look at, at Daniel and Al, with our kind of double big there. We know what Grant is, and we've seen him throughout the season when guys have been in and out. So taking a look at uh, Daniel and Al together, how that works, and then um, Derek as well with certain combinations. So, you know, we want to be more crisp than we were yesterday um, offensively, and then defensively get back to our standard, which is, you know, could hold the team to 90 if we didn't give up those threes. And so to hold them to 102 as poorly as we defended the three-point line uh, shows that, we can be an elite team on that end. Uh, I think you mentioned Rob <clears throat> start doing stuff today, two days and all that. Like what, what is he able to do initially, I guess, after the surgery? Well, it's initially just the movement, the movement part, you know, getting back into, he's in, he's in the meetings in the gym and good spirits. And so getting them around and just getting that flexibility back in off top. And then you can kind of build up pretty quickly from there. Um, and Joan Morgan, 10 day contract, I guess, uh, what did you like about him and bringing him back, I guess, after training camp? Yeah, we had him in camp. He was he was banged up a little bit in camp and then uh, had a good, really good year with Maine. Uh, another guy that can do what we're asking on the defensive end uh, with some of the switching. And, you know, he's, he's done a really well, good job down in Maine. And uh, obviously that translates to here with the same system. So a uh, guy that was close by, has paid his dues, played well, and uh, he can jump right in if it need be in a snap. Um, and it's been about – it's been – more than two months since you guys lost back-to-back -back games. I like, guess is that something you feel within the season? Just I guess, especially during the grind of it. Feel as far as what I'm sorry. Just like you're like, oh shoot, like we actually lost two games or just. Yeah, I mean it's it's different situations and some of those. Obviously Toronto, we didn't have anybody and you know felt like we still should have won that. Um, you know played hard in that game. This game was a little bit different in the sense where uh, we got caught up in some other things that we hadn't in a while, and so we want to get back to what we've done well and playing through physicality and contact and understanding how teams are going to defend coming to playoff time and what they're going to do to Jason and different guys. So we've been really good at that. And uh, obviously last night wasn't our best, especially in the fourth quarter, but uh, I wouldn't take a ton away from Toronto with all the guys we had missing, but love the effort and fight up there. Thanks. You may, uh, in this post COVID in NBA as a coach, you have to have a discussion with some of your guys who might not be vaccinated or who might be questioned about it to say, especially the, the heat that Kyrie's taking about the public scrutiny or, hey, get it cleared up or I, I, got, I get your personal choice. But you have to have to, those discussions since you've taken over even as an assistant last year with guys who were against it or might not have been. No, I mean, you don't have those discussions, honestly. It's, it's a personal choice. And everybody, you know, it's, it's up to them. That's their decision. But, um, you know, it's, it's been two years now that that's all been on the table. And so everybody knows the uh, restrictions or whatever. And so we leave that up to the guys. It's their personal choice. And, and there's not much discussion that we have with them. And it just seems like you've got to be willing to suffer the consequences of, let's say, you do have a, a series in Toronto and maybe a guy can't play. I mean, is, is that something you're willing to accept or is that something you deal with down the road? I think everybody in the NBA knows uh, the restrictions in certain places, obviously the New York and Los Angeles mandates, if you're a player there and uh, Toronto changing their restrictions lately. So it's, it's something that's well known around the league. And like I said, everybody's personal choice, but it's not something that we try to influence or discuss with anybody. And what can you do over the next, I mean, we did enough practice time 
over the next week or so to, to be able to implement some of the things you're looking to do and the changes, or will you just have to do it in games? A little bit of both. Uh, we have some time in between, obviously, the back to back coming up on the road trip, but uh, we have days off after that. And today was a good chance to watch some film and, and see some of the mistakes we made yesterday. And so teaching points for sure, we can get on the court and, and as much as we can help Daniel in that regard and, and even Derek's to some extent, I think we need to take advantage of that. Uh, they're out there playing with some lineups and groups that they haven't as much and Jason, Jalen, Marcus as well, playing with these guys that they haven't seen as much this year. So it takes a little bit of time, not a ton of practice time now. So the film sessions are crucial, obviously. And then the in-game adjustments uh, that we're kind of doing on the fly will be beneficial. The turnovers in Toronto, they were kind of ripping you guys at midcourt and getting runouts, but it seemed some, most of them uh, last night were unforced. Yeah. What did you see with, with the 18 turnovers? Some carelessness for sure. I, uh, you know, try to make some home run passes and just sloppiness overall. And that's why I said our fourth quarter our execution wasn't the best. Um, you know, we had 18 as a team. They scored 18 off those. They had 18. We scored 24. So we technically won that battle, but a lot were unforced, uh, you know. And so just keep it, keeping it simple, making the right play as we have in a while, uh, understanding their team that's very physical and uh, looks to you know get get out and get steals and so uh, it's KYP with Butler and some of those guys that reach and grab and had to be stronger with the ball and make better decisions. And Jason had three shots in the fourth quarter. Is that okay if he makes all the right plays or do you go Jason? You got to be more aggressive. Like how do you approach that when teams are trying to stop him from shooting, but he's your best scorer? Yeah, it's a mix. As I said, uh, him continuing to make the right play, um, getting guys wide open looks as he has throughout the season. But also, it's putting them in spots where it's harder to double team, uh, simple actions that they can't take away as easy. So keeping them aggressive and, and, you know, part of it was he got to the basket and felt he got fouled at times. And, you know, we want him to get downhill and play through some of that, but uh, not just use him as bait. Obviously, he's a big time scorer for a reason. And you can only do so much at times when teams do double team and take him out of it. And he trusts his guys behind it. But at the same time, we can find some opportunities for him to get more shots than that for sure. Wrap it up right there. Thank you, coach. Thank you.